So um, welcome everybody here to the Martin e. Siegel Theater Center, the Graduate Center CUNY. It is uh, 12.30 uh, noon time in uh, Manhattan and uh, we are having with us today uh, one of the great uh, workers in global theater, Dorota Maslowska, a great writer, artist, singer, poet um, from Poland and uh, Christina and uh, Tomek uh, uh, from the Polish Cultural Institute and uh, the uh, and from, uh, from Yale University. And we are going to talk today about uh, Dorota, who has been many times with us at the Siegel Center. And we are celebrating um, a great event, which we got done uh, in the time um, of COVID. It is the book, Four Plays by Dorota Maslowska. And the plays are, no matter how hard we tried, a couple of poor Polish-speaking Romanians, Bowie in Warsaw, which actually will be shown live today at 7.30 at the Bohemian National Hall, and How I Became a Witch. It's really fresh out of the oven. It still smells like fresh uh, print. It came out last week. So um, welcome, everybody. And um, Dorota, where are you? And how are you today? Uh, I'm great. I'm, I'm really excited. I'm really happy because uh, we started to plan this book uh, before pandemia. And then the work uh, stopped. And uh, actually, in past few months i i i wasn't i wasn't sure if it really comes out uh, so 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 the fact that it's not a prop but it's a real book <laughs> uh, as you said uh smelling of fresh print is really a uh, beautiful surprise for me and i think that uh, in poland such a book doesn't exist like i don't have the anthology of my play so so this is the first one and it's american and it's i'm really i'm really proud of it i just uh, yesterday i i came from chicago where the where uh bowie in warsaw was staged by trapdoor theater and this is the play you mentioned uh, that will be shown in bohemian uh hall today tonight uh Yes, and I'm in the Manhattan right now, uh, and and I'm really excited to have this talk with you. Fantastic, thank you. Um, I didn't know that there was no anthology of yours in Poland, so it's quite a privilege for us here at the Siegel Center, who had you actually very early, I think 2006 already, or something, you came yeah. to us in the very beginning. Um, so um, let's uh, welcome Christina. Christina, uh, tell us a little bit about you first, where you are, what time it is, and what you do. Okay, uh, nice to be with you. Uh, it's very funny that usually I would be with you in New York, but it happens so that I'm speaking from Warsaw, <laughs> and Toyota is with you uh, in New York. So I'm uh, in Warsaw. Yes, hello. Um, and, um, well, I would like to say a few things about uh, Doyota. Um, yeah, let's, let's just try maybe first say hello to uh, Tomek. So and tell a bit, you are a researcher, you're an academic, you're a writer. Um, tell us a little bit about your work. Uh, I work uh, at uh, the university, uh, Yale University, where I teach Polish. I teach Polish culture. And among other things, I teach Polish film and I teach Polish theater. And I have to say that in both my courses, Doyota's work is uh, prominently present because uh, I find Doyota's work one of the most important, uh, sonorous, I will speak about that in a moment, voices. So my students are uh, connecting uh, to your uh, work. Uh, through film and through, mm -hmm. when possible, through uh, theater as well. I show yeah. them excerpts from uh, no matter how, how we try. Fantastic. And you wrote also the introduction or, <clears throat> um, for our book, Atomic. And um, welcome here. Tell us where you are and how are you connected to, to the world of Dorota Maslowska? So uh, I'm just across the Hudson River, across from Manhattan <laughs> and where you are in Jersey City. And uh, I, I am a film and performing arts curator at the Polish Cultural Institute in New York. And uh, Frank and I um, are good friends. Uh, we go way back um, uh, organizing um, an event together. And around four years ago, we had the idea to, um, to publish uh, the anthology of uh, Dorota's 
uh, theater works. And uh, as Dorota mentioned, uh, the pandemic actually uh, stopped the project uh, for three years. This event was supposed to happen in June 2020, but had to be postponed. So finally, three years later, uh, yeah, we have it. And uh, I used uh, the opportunity um, of this book being published to also present a play um, by Chicago-based uh, Trapdoor Theater, uh, who are staging Bowie in Warsaw, uh, written by Dorota. And this weekend, uh, audience in New York and New Jersey will have opportunity to see it uh, today and tomorrow at 7.30 at Bohemian National Hall uh, during the Rehearsal for Truth Festival organized by Pavla Niklova and uh, Václav Havel Library. And on Sunday at 7 o'clock, uh, the audience in New Jersey can see the play in at the Jersey City Theatre Center during the uh, Voices International Theater Festival organized by Olga Levina. Um, it's going to be at 7 o'clock. And after all the performances, there will be Q&A with the cast, the director, and also with Dorota. So please come over if you're around. Yeah, yeah. It is so important that in New York City, we see, listen, and hear global international theater. So much has closed down the Lincoln Center Global Festival, uh, the Coil Festival, many, many others. Um, even uh, the under the radar, you know, is uh, in a way in danger. So it is great um, to um, to have our international collaborators um, with us. And um, it is uh, wonderful that Dorota took time out of her life uh, to be with us, to fly to Chicago, see the production, now come to New York. This is really a big honor to have you with us. Dorota, before we come to you, um, Christina, um, since you are someone who over decades monitors the Polish scene in theater and in film, um, tell us a little bit, how does Dorota fit in? What, where is her place? Um, well, I want to say, I want to start uh, just saying that, uh, that something that I mentioned before that Dorota, you are one of the most prominent voices uh, sounding from Poland. And I always approach your writing as the writing of the generation that is a post-communist generation. It's kind of millennial, a little bit partly millennial. Anyway, the uh, generation that very importantly um, bridges uh, the fall of communism and the legacies of communism and this uh, transitional periods and transitional periods have been always for every um, cultural uh, critic, uh, the most interesting periods because very many things are happening there. And uh, I have to say that that uh, Dorota's voice is uh, very prominent one for me, uh, one of the most prominent voices. And uh, as we see here, uh, Dorota is an iconic uh, figure. Uh, the publication, she's really heard by uh, Polish uh, society, by Polish critics, and uh, that being heard sometimes also um, entails, let's say very critical voices in, in a way when, uh, uh, Wojna polsko ruska so um, Snow White and Russian Red, as in um, Benjamin Palop uh, translations is worded, these were voices raging. Uh, but still, uh, it's I think I think this is a pattern that every publication, every every time uh, you uh, you do something, either. Um, as the novel or as something on stage, it produces people's reaction and you are heard. And that's, uh, that's uh, one of the most important uh, thing that, um, and, and, and uh, very positive things. People di discuss, people have arguments about your work. So you are present even uh, the language you use uh, kind of goes out from the uh, printed page and goes out from the theater and becomes a part of the general uh, lingo. And if I were to say what your work is about, <laughs> well, sorry, 
I am speaking here as a uh, professor. Uh, well, I think that, as I said, you dissect uh, that um, Polish uh, society in tra transition in a very, very often very brutal language, uh, very um, unpleasant language. Uh, as you say, społeczeństwo jest niemiłe, the society is unpleasant, <laughs> and uh, the society really is unpleasant. Nevertheless, the society notices your work. Dorota's work is about everybody and every single time. Poland, on the other hand, Poland is also everywhere. So this is the society uh, that's uh, that's facing uh, commercialization, dehumanization, lies, something that we are accustomed uh, with everywhere. And according to me, again, the language uh, that Dorota uses and something that that resonates, uh, you know, in a theatrical way. For me, uh, this is these are the echoes of Witold Gombrowicz and Gombrowicz's language, humor, the way uh, Gombrowicz's uh, past and present uh, merge together. Sometimes it's difficult because we are unable to decipher which is which. This is also, to me, Wyspiański and all kinds of uh, voices, all kinds of narratives that happen simultaneously, that overlap uh, and confuse very often. But this is confuse the reader and the reader has to be confused. So this is what uh, we... and. Another great name that comes to my mind from Polish the theat the theatrical tradition, Witkacy, with all its strange names, characters, funny, uh, laughter. I heard what amazes me in your theater is laughter and that laughter that's uh, all encompassing, everybody laughs and then boom. There is a moment when I remember I experienced uh, that, for instance, when I was watching No Matter How Hard We Tried, then silence, because people know that there is something very, very, very important, very serious, dangerous, even underneath, lurking. Well, the theater, uh, if I had to summarize, this is the post-dramatic, post-modern uh, theater, which lacks unified, uh, dialogic, linear um, exchanges, uh, which is, as I said, very patched, and um, in which the audience is a uh, very uh, kind of very active participant. So uh, maybe I will uh, stop uh, mm -hmm. here, uh, and then uh, we'll return to all these uh, questions. <clears throat> and. Yeah. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. And um, and true, the work of Dorota as a novelist and a playwright is uh, significant. It's being noticed, as you say, her. She's quoted on on the top pages of newspapers. The German Spiegel magazine ask her about her opinion about daily cultural and also political matters. Um, so she's a spokesperson for the country. Something that in America, unfortunately, since the time perhaps of the Living Theater, Arthur Miller. Um, um, has gone and doesn't exist um, anymore. But uh, Dorota, now to you, first of all, again, thrilled you're here, thrilled we could do your book. Thank you to come back to the Siegel Center, which is in a little bit your American home and uh, hope that you will like the performance tonight. But how did you come to the theater? You, if I remember right, you were a high school student and on the side wrote a book. It became a sensation, got the highest literary prize, you uh, started out as a novelist. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for calling Martin Siegel Center my uh, American home because I remember my debut here, uh, my debut there in, in the beginning of uh, to, uh, 2000 something. Uh, I came for the first time to New York and there was a reading of uh, two uh, poor Polish speaking Romanians with Benjamin Paylop. I remember I was I was a, a small girl, girl, really thrilled and uh, frightened by 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 this this giant city. Um, but um, 
the business year, I, I, I um, appeared in theater by accident. Uh, I used to be a novelist. Uh, I made my debut very early when I was 19, as you said. Uh, it was um, <clears throat> strongly criticized and highly acclaimed at the same time. Um, it was uh, the language of the book. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm speaking about um, Snow White and Russian Red. Uh, the language was uh, paradoxical. It was uh, at the same time very, very brutal, very ruthless, uh, very vulgar, and stuffed with uh, figures and metaphors from classical literature, uh, which my head was stuffed off uh, because of uh, pre my preparations to my uh, high school exams. Mm. And uh, this language, I think that this language made theater directors to um to 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 ask me for uh, writing for theater and i was um in the meantime there was there was my second novel um which was written in a sort of rap style uh like it was a mixture of uh, colloquial language and rhymes and it, it was just a stream of Something. It was really weird, but it was adapted uh, by theater, and it was really I I I saw this uh, spectacle. It's Park Love, Queen's Peacock, uh, untranslatable, I think. Uh, I saw this spectacle, and I I I felt something. I felt that this language really works in theater. It's very oral. It's very uh, vital. People are laughing like mad uh, and I thought that even if I was uh, from a small town uh, I, I I never went to theater I didn't know anything about theater I, I felt that I could do something for theater uh, and when I got my first commission from Grzegorz Jarzyna from uh, Warsaw uh, Rozmaitosti Theater um, I know that it was a very naive uh, decision to sign the agreement, and um, and I remember very well that first uh, thing that I I did after was I I went to a library and I borrowed um, a copy of Macbeth to 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 check how to how how one should write plays. Uh, and then uh, I asked my, my my friend who studied uh, on the first year of uh, the theatrology uh, how to write plays, and he told me that there are three rules. Uh, this were one was that a character uh, should characters should say something different that they think. The second was uh, that, uh, that there should be some bridge uh, between the, the beginning and the ending. And uh, the, the, the third one I can't remember, but uh, as random as they are, they just served me for writing my first play, uh, a couple of poor Polish speaking Romanians. Um, that was really, I think it, it was my main uh, international success, the only one I would say, because this piece occurred to be, um, I, I don't know, the most universal of my of my works. Even it was very Polish and uh, touching very Polish problems. There is this uh, inferiority complex. There is this. Um, um, mockery about Romanians as worse people, uh, but it, the play was staged in uh, first in London, then somewhere, then in Berlin, then uh, then in uh, Sahalin suddenly, uh, mm -hmm. then in Havana. So it was really staged everywhere. Now I'm at the moment I'm writing a screen play based on it writing the screenplay i feel very well how old this piece is that it's it's, it's really written 
almost 20 years ago and it, it's just old the 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 problems the social problems that are reflected in it are really uh are not current anymore but to me and the director i michal martak that i am writing the screenplay with um are trying to adjust it to uh to more actual situation in poland and and i think the I think it, it 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 might be a good movie based on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is my uh, this is the 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 story of my presence in theater that is not that obvious, and I didn't mean to be a playwright. Yeah, so you are an accidental tourist in a way, and yes, I do remember when you came first, and the great Akada Grenda helped uh, to make that happen and uh, made us aware of you. And um, I'm Tomek, I know you have to go to prepare for the work tonight um, at the Bohemian National Hall for the 7.30 show of um, Bowie in Barso. Um, Tomek, you present for over a decade and even longer, um, almost two decades maybe even, uh, work uh, from Poland in New York City. So one of the great active centers like Japan Society, the French Cultural Services, Goethe, the Romanian Cultural Center and others. Um, what is special about uh, Dorota's work? How Polish, Polish, universal, she said, uh, is it? And um, how, how do you relate to it? Well, it's, uh, I kind of uh, compare it to also to like Gombrowicz and Witkacy, like uh, Christina did, uh, in a way that, you know, Dorota creates her own language, uh, uh, creates her own words. Um, it's it's very funny it's uh, it's very surreal and sometimes psychedelic and uh, it's it's a fresh voice from from the polish uh you know playwrights and uh, as you mentioned agatha uh, grenda brought uh, your attention and our attention to dorota first and then um we continued uh, the focus on on dorota as a, one of the main playwrights in Poland and mm. uh, all, all the readings and uh, staging of, of, of her plays were always uh, uh, very well uh, um, re received in New York and Chicago with great reviews from New York Times and Chicago Tribune so that's that also shows that you know her yeah. Her plays are relevant here and uh, important to, to the American audience. Yeah, I mean, they were staged, which is rare, you know, for um, plays they do not come from American writers, plays that do not come from the British uh, Empire. Um, um, uh, it's very rare to have a staging to be directed at it, but you, uh, Dorota, made that happen through your work and the interest, um, and now you also am um, back. Um, um, Dorota, why do you write? Um, why uh, let's take the play, a couple of poor Polish people, Romanians. Um, you also sing, um, you also do the novels, but what is special about theater? What, what uh, challenges you? What makes it uh, interesting? Um, actually, I, 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 I don't know. I really think it's, it's, um, it's a sort of nightmare question for every writer. Why do you write? Uh, and but sometimes I quite often I'm exposed to this question, so so I'm used to it. But the 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 answer is uh, difficult. Um, at first, I thought that theater gives me some sort of uh, uh, very. Uh, lively connection with um, other creators, other artists that I uh, will be able to work, for example, with actors, with some kind of uh, improv improvisation, um, that there will be something very create creative about it. I think it's also the, the temptation to see, because work of uh, a writer is a bit boring, because first you sit completely alone and writing your book and then uh, the reception of it is also very individual and private and 
sometimes you have I don't know conversation with people who read your book and um, give you their their feedback, but um, when you start to work for theater, you have this very um, vital uh, spontaneous reaction of people. You 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 can see it. You can feel it. You can feel. Uh, the audience becoming one uh, laughing or crying uh, body, and I think this is uh, this is uh, something that um, that uh, made me um, to write uh, for theater. Of course, it was sort of illusion, um, but. I also like the the very um, long and uh, colorful life of theater pieces that they you write them and then they are staged in so many different uh, cultural contexts and uh, that's uh, my uh, my lines my text is fulfilled by actors from so many uh, countries by their experience, but by their bodies, uh, their intuitions. And I think that this, this, is, this is something very, comparing to literature, it's something really um, intense and, um, and fulfilling. For for an author, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, no, that's that's uh, that's uh, uh, quite something to think about. That the loneliness of the the novelist, you know, um, yeah. of the uh, um, that in theater it is about a community, human beings in a room talking to each other, making agreements, and at a certain time in a space they show something and share it with others in dark. Yeah, it goes it's out. A energy and 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 it's about a moment that we are together mm -hmm. in. So how do you write um, when you when you write your work? Do you sit in cafes? Are you at home? Um, do you what? You traveling? Um, how do you? How how's the craft? How do you do it? <laughs> um, the better question would be how I used to do it because at the uh -huh. moment I'm I'm. Uh, uh, I, I think it's a completely different moment in my lab, life when I just finished uh, finished my album, finished a um, book that that is a collection of my essays about uh, Warsaw, and I'm really I I'm fed up with uh, creating and I'm exhausted, so. Uh, it, it 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 seems difficult to to even imagine how I work because I don't work but usually usually it's very I think it's a very it's 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 a sort of solitude I I never go to cafes I always sit at home uh I have to be very focused I always do it in the morning because I'm more intelligent in the in the morning you can see me now it's morning uh you can see me now uh, very talkative and uh, elaborate, but uh, the closer it is to the evening, I'm, I'm, I'm just um, more and more uh, silent and frightened, <laughs> and uh, intellectually not active. Um, yeah, I think it's. Uh, I always wanted to be a professional writer uh, when I was a, I don't know, a teenager. Uh, but when when you go professional, it of course it's disappointing because it's a it's a job. You earn money like this. It's not it's not very romantic. But I'm I must say that um, this work, even if you do it under some pr life pressure. Even if you make money like this, even if you have deadlines, 
uh, even if, it, if, if you are forced to writing, there are some moments of, of insight. I think that this is uh, the work that, the work on language uh, that gives you some sort of insight, that uh, it gives you um, a look into deeper layers of reality. Um, I, I think it it's just, because um, you track the way people speak, and it's so it, it's usually it's very banal and and um, it's just a chit chat. But when you when you go deeper into it, you see that it's so full of some of history of proverbs, sayings, some some very subconscious level in which uh, Poland uh, shows up. And this is what I find the, the most uh, freeing moment of my work. And I think that all the pieces I, I have written uh, are about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe before we come to Bowie in Warsaw, which we're gonna to see tonight, um... The, you said the couple of poor uh, Polish people, Romanians, is um, something that put you on the stages, Schaubühne Berlin, and so many others uh, and in London. Um, tell us maybe very shortly the story and what was in, what were you interested in when you wrote it? Um, I just, uh, I think that that's, uh, the story of this story uh, is quite banal because I just heard someone uh, uh, saying we are a couple of poor uh, Polish speaking Romanians and um, it always functions like this that I hear a sentence like that and I start to develop it to develop it to to a story um, and and I think that um, um, certain, I, I actually I don't know why it uh, turned out to be so universal. Um, it's a story about a couple of random people who met at the party and they were drunk, they were high, they um, decided to they, they wanted to have a joyride. They terrorized uh, a driver that they met on a gas station. Uh, they pushed into his car. Uh, and that's how their nightmare trip uh, through winter Poland uh, started. And I think that this, when I uh, read it now, I think it's a story about, uh, now I see it as a story about uh, uh, a man and a woman uh, conflict uh, and that's that about misogyny about um, Polish inferiority complex things like this mm -hmm. yeah and the idea is that you know they pretend to be Romanians and not speaking well Polish and misbehaving but they're actually Polish yeah, um, that's why I, Polish people and they, you know, betray, you know, um, in a way, you know, their, 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 their ideas, their country, their home. And, um, and as you say, you know, that's what they do, what they think and how they act, who they are. And yeah, who they that's, pretend why, that's to why be. I found this sentence. So this sentence about uh, two Polish speaking Romanians so thrilling uh, because Polish speaking Romanians uh, don't exist. Like they do exist, but not not it, it's not a very obvious figure. Mm -hmm. No, it's a, it's such a beautiful, complex story, as you say, on so many levels, and in a way reflecting and uh, absorbing like a spot, but also reflecting in a way like a diamond where more light comes in and shines out um, 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 of 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 that country, that European country, a country in change and transition. Um, from from the the past the end. Um, no matter how hard we try, talk a little bit about um, about ab about that play. Um, 
It's a it's a play that I uh, have written for a commission of uh, some German festival. I was I, I think that the title of this festival was uh, uh, digging deep, uh, getting dirty, um, and since and since uh, this were. German people who asked me for uh, uh, a piece, I thought it should be something about the uh, Polish German issue, uh, which I think is very, uh, which is still very active in Polish subconsciousness. Uh, even if, um, if this uh, resentment and and the feeling of being the most injured victim of war in the world, uh, in Polish people, uh, was slightly uh, diminished by Ukrainian war. And now I think it's still very uh, present in people's minds. I find it very interesting because um, this is my one of the, the, the of my most um, of the most thrilling themes for me. Um, how trauma and uh, resentment and um, the feeling of being hurt is um, transmitted um, to to next generations. And I think that all this prejudice and um, feelings of being hurt that I have towards German people who did, did, didn't uh, do anything uh, wrong to me, uh, I, I feel very well that it's, that it, it, it's inherited from my grandma uh, and um, I, I made it a uh, subject of this play this um, weird mysterious mysterious uh, intergenerational transmissions of um, prejudice and um, resentment mm -hmm. yeah yeah, no, it, it is it is really quite uh, stunning how you like an echo load in a, in a ship, you know, the, the depths of what we don't see under the surface, but it's what's really there, how you detect it and how you combine it. And also, as uh, Christina said, you know, create in the static way, laughter, uh, cries, uh, sad feelings and uh, and also astonishment, sometimes a little shock about that vulgar root language and then the incredible beauty um, of, of also um, of your sentences. Um, so tonight we will we will see Bowie uh, in um, in in Varsa. What was the idea uh, um, um, for that? And, uh, and... Um, I heard many times uh, this story, a very short one story about uh, David Wars uh, David Bowie coming to Warsaw in, in early seventies, um, and. It was uh, it, it was always very it seemed to me very inspiring, uh, and um, even it was very short because he 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 was on his way from Moscow to Berlin. He spent only forty minutes on some very random walk on Zolibos, uh, the the district of Warsaw where I used to live. Um, I always found it really inspirational because, um, of course, I, 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 as a person who was born in early 80s, I don't know these times. Uh, I know them only from movies and books, especially books that I read as a child and a teenager, uh, very didactic in tone, uh, old-fashioned uh, novels for teenagers written in 70s with very, I would say, 
what is most exciting for me as a writer is this language, which is very old fashioned and very slang. So it's an impossible mixture. Uh, the authors wanted to make it as teenage and slang and crazy, crazy as possible. At the same time, they were very adult and very formal, very didactic. Uh, these were mostly educational novels, um, socialistic, let's say. Uh, so, so 70s in Warsaw uh, were for me like this, uh, very socialistic, very gray, very sad in a way. Uh, and suddenly this uh, stranger, 40 minutes of um, David Bowie in Warsaw uh, made me think that he was a sort of, you know, a flare of color or um, some kind of unnoticed messiah. Uh, and that's how this, uh, this piece came to me. This was the inspiration. Mm -hmm. Wow, that will be, will, be, will be so interesting. I cannot wait to see how um, Traptor um, uh, interpreted that. Um, uh, Christina, what comes to your mind when you listen to Dorota? Well, what, com what comes to my mind is language and uh, the question about the rhythm, because when I read your stuff, no matter whether this is theater or, um, or uh, prose, it's like, you know, I hear this, uh, this uh, rhythmic uh, prose and I want to immediately uh, say it aloud. So this theatricality uh, is there. It's, it's something amazing that when you write, for instance, when I was reading Pavko Ulove, uh, the Queen's Peacock or um, Puke, if you want. Peacock. Uh, peacock yes, yeah. well, peacock, this yeah. is like, you know, uh, that the overlap. I had to, I, I started reading it aloud. So, so how is the theater built into your language? How do you hear? You, you uh, very often uh, talk about language. How do you hear that language? Um, it's hard to explain. I think it's um, um, the, the main factor in this process is uh, the pleasure of um, pleasure of of a beautiful sentence. Like I, 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 I like to write sentences that are astonishing uh, and um, rhythmical, and there is some hard to spot beauty in it. And um, this, these are sentences that I want to give to people. Uh, these are the sentences I love. And I think that uh, this love is 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 the factor and um, i just love how they sound i love how people react to them uh, i like to drag the audience into some sort of chain of associations uh rhymes uh weird connections um bizarre um, visions and uh, I think that uh, this is what I like about theater, that it gives this opportunity to observe, observe the, reaction of, the reaction of people, the, the, the spontaneous uh, reception. Sometimes, uh, I think that a couple of times, I, I really saw people that start to clap their hands to, um, to physically involve into a spectacle. And um, this is what is very, what, I don't like theater very much, but this process of uh, um, of 
having this impact on people, this very physical impact by language is really something for me uh, mm -hmm. as an artist. Yeah. No, it is it is quite uh, um, quite quite beautiful. I might even uh, read a, a, a few sentences. You might hopefully maybe read to us at the end um, of the talk. Mm -hmm. In your play, your next play, we might talk about how I became a witch. It's actually very funny because earlier you said I, when I started out as a novelist and about theater, I didn't know which is which, but mm -hmm. you became a witch, uh, uh, and uh, and so it's uh, interesting and it's a, a grim fairy tales. Uh, based story, a children's story, but actually for grown-ups, as all grim fairy tales were, not for children, they were for grown-ups. They were told in the homes. I actually come from that region in Germany where uh, people told them in the cold winter nights. So here a witch says, when I'm walking home, all wet, cold, and mean, I look in the windows that I pass with a leer. I live at the world's edge, so the walk takes two years. There's so many windows and all of them lit. And wherever I look, I see people sit, some sitting on sofas, some on their parents' knees, but they are all staring blankly at flat screen TVs. They're checking to see if they have more, 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 or too little, as little as they had um, before. Um, tell us a little bit about this play. Um, <clears throat> it was... Um... It was a play I, I have written, as I learned from uh, Christina's prologue actually yesterday, uh, when my, my daughter was uh, only nine. And uh, I think I, I, I was very, I was deeply uh, immersed in a literature like this. We have a strong tradition of um, uh, of, of children literature that is very rhythmical, like poemas for children, I would say. Uh, and this is what I wanted to, to do, to, to make a story that is very informed, it's very traditional and, and old fashioned, but I wanted to, um, I don't know, this, this, uh, criticism against uh, consumerism, capitalism, uh, and watching TV, which is not very uh, actual uh, now, when, when everybody's addicted to smartphones uh, mm -hmm. rather than TV sets. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to, to, to fulfill this very traditional form with something, um, with, with some modern uh, critical attitude to, 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 I don't know, pop culture, uh, trash culture, and uh, to see how children react to this. Uh, so it's, it's didactic, didactic in tone as well. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, um, children liked it. I, it was staged in, it, it, there was a huge, Broadway, uh, Broadway, I would say, a sh show in, in Warsaw, in the Theatre Studio. Uh, children loved it. It was very uh, funny and gloomy at the same time. So, mm. but it's not, it's not the most important thing I, I, I did in life, that's for sure. <laughs> Yeah, in in incredible. The author, uh, Tabalowski, by the way, did that uh, translation so beautifully, which I um, read from. Um, a, a friend, uh, I think Agata Kolyach, if I say the name right, from Tia Varsova, said, oh, so great, Dorota is coming. I listen to her music, and when I work out, you know, this is my favorite uh, 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 song. So, um, so in that way, you are a classical bard. You're kind of also a singer, you know, in Homeric tradition and writing plays, uh, uh, singing songs, uh, writing novels. How is that all connected for you? Is it one continuous reflection? Are they very different or does it influence each other? How, how do you how do you deal with this puzzle of your artistic uh, realization? That's for sure that uh, this, um, this um, very different um, measures that I use to express myself influence each other. Um, for example, I think that my 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 way of 
my development is not a, it's not a very obvious way it's it's um it's bumpy and it's not logical because I, I started as a novelist, then I um, started to write for theater, then I was a novelist again, I started to write songs, I started to produce music. And for now, I think that I, I became a poet, uh, which, is, which is weird, but I, I, I see some logic in it like um this process of writing and writing and writing uh i think it it gave me some sort of precision in what i in what i say um and and that i need less and less words to express something that i want to express um and that's why uh that's why i turn to music as a main of expression. I also think that the situation in Poland, uh, political and, and, and social, is so tense and so dense and so unbearable in some way that literature is unable to express it anymore. Like, how many times can you say, oh my God, it's the, like nothing worse can happen and there is always something worse that happens next day. So I think that um, I just, it was the intuition that I need something more, uh, more radical, more expressive, um, more violent. And uh, I think that there is al always uh, some, some kind of belly knowledge. Uh, what to do now, what to do next. And um, and this intuition told me that it, it should be music at the moment, but I don't, I never know what is next. I never mm -hmm. know where, where, where it's, uh, um, it will bring me, where it will bring me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about Can Poland. I... Uh, oh yeah, Christina. Could I ask a question? You yeah. know, you mentioned it in relation to this, uh, that you are doing films, you are doing music. Where can people see your films? Because, for instance, uh, other people in Niluje or some other films are not available. And this is a part, a very important part of um, kind of sharing with, with whatever you do with the public. Um, I think that um, the movie uh, based on Snow White and Russian Red uh, by Ksaver is uh, easily available on YouTube. I, I'm not sure if in States, but uh, in Europe for sure. But other people, uh, this movie is a special case because uh, the language of the book, which is uh, actually a rap song was so difficult to not only to translate but also to put into sub subtitles that they are uh, I, I I'm not even if, if it, it's a question of uh, if they are comprehensible but if they still make any sense at all. So I think that this uh, this movie is just unbearable for foreign um, spectators, and I think that it's and even it was published in um, it was published in the difficult uh, period after just after pandemia, so uh, it didn't have a big audience uh, and was very. Uh, it, it, its presence in cinemas was, was very short and now it's available only on Canal Plus, I think, but it's not, <clears throat> I think that the whole distribution of movies changed and this um, this special movie fell victim to, to that. Mm -hmm. Well, there will be, I'm sure, ways down the future, and it's on Channel oh, Plus. Yeah. But, um, 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 daughter, let's go back. I would because you touched on it on Poland. 
Um, I think Heinrich Heine wrote his famous poems also, when Denke ich an Deutschland in der Nacht, when I think about Germany in the night, you know, what do you think about Poland in the night? <laughs> uh, well, I think, I, I think only one thing, uh, let's not allow to win a peace uh, in this election. Because it will it it will turn this country uh, to 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 obvious hell. I would say like it's 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 quite a hell at the moment because because of uh, polarization, because of co permanent conflicts, because of the very populistic um, line that peace has in its um, um, politics. Uh, but now the tension is so high, so unbearable, that it's really, our country is turning into a nightmare and it's such a plot twist, such a dark plot twist that we dreamt about democracy so long, for so long, and that this, longing for turned into something like this like as I, I always say that poly society has a sort of it's a sort of we have a sort of society cancer like um after so many years so many centuries of very dark history made people unable to be free and, and this is what I would say. Uh, I, I know that this uh, conversation doesn't allow us to uh, develop this uh, mm -hmm. subject, but um, I think that my words are dramatic enough. Aren't yeah, they? yeah, they are. And um, I think Brecht said, you know, when we live, what do we write about in dark times? What do we sing about? He said, we write and sing about. In the dark times, as in the US, you know, also so many critical voices, as everywhere, as in Germany, uh, from artists um, who uh, always have had the role in society, you know, to uh, to show problems, to to discuss conflicts on a stage in a peaceful uh, way, in an open arena, and where people can make up their minds, and uh, and uh, and um, it's a celebration of uh, free speech, of uh, expressions. That's why it's at the very core of democracy. And that's why theater is so deeply connected um, 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 to that idea. And it's life uh, in itself, because um, we are part of nature in, in, in a play as uh, Andreas Weber, who we talked about, philosopher, German philosopher, who said, you know, we, he sees theater as the expression of um, of, of life, of forces of life in this chaotic uh, world we live in. And I, I can, and, I can mm -hmm. agree because theater is so, um, it's very avant garde, it's very, it's very active, it's uh, able to contain um, many very current things uh, that uh, other um, genres are much more. Mm, they need just more time to adapt and theater is always very but, it, but i think it's a, it's also tricky it's a trap because um showing things expressing things is not always doesn't don't, doesn't always mean uh, going deeper like you need time to to get deeper to see the whole picture and it's sometimes a sin of theater that it's too uh, to current. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, um, so, um, um, what are you? What are you? Um, you are working on that uh, screenplay now, and then you say you have, will have to take a time off to to recreate. But what are your your dreams um, uh, as a, a little metal girl, uh, which you all are in a way? Are we going to hear that monologue from? No matter how hard we try, but what are your dreams? What are you thinking about? What would you like to be, and what would you uh, write to like to write about, or, um, or how to express yourself? What are your your plans for the future? Um, I never like uh, I, I I don't like to 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 uh, 
show my plants uh, because I, I it's a sort of uh, bias. Like yeah. that mm -hmm. you can just uh, burn down in this, you know, expressing the, the, them. Uh, but uh, in past few weeks, I thought madly about my what what I will do next in music. Mm -hmm. um, it's my obsession right now. Uh, like I see that uh, with the with this album that I uh, published uh, last month or two months ago, mm -hmm. it's the whole world of uh this sort of expression um opened in front of me and now i i'm really obsessed uh but uh time will show time will tell time will, time will tell when you you said when you were um uh, you know that high school student and you didn't know which is which and, or what is what in theater what what did you read what were what were your influences um what were your uh, the music you listened to what 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 was it is there a moment even where you said yes i will be a writer can you remember that yes i not the not, not the exact moment this I can't spot, but um, I remember very well that uh, since I learned how to write, this was my way of expression. This was my second lie. That even yesterday, uh, walking down the New York streets, I thought that so very early I developed this second life of mine that I lived. But uh, along with a normal life, I had my uh, notebooks, I had my um, essays, I had my uh, writing. And um, when I remember this, this years just before I made my debut, I think it was, as I said before, um, the, the 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 Snow White and Russian Red is just packed with things that I uh, had in my mind at the moment, which come from very classical literature, and I think that this is the this is the very weird mixture uh, of this small town brutality of life and and classical literature. The, the, the this sort of metaphors, poetry, uh, beauty of language, mm -hmm. and I, I think this was uh, I, what, I was this, hmm? what was the literature? What did you read? What was it? Hmm. I remember very well that I was fascinated with Henry Miller, Anais Nin, this so the, this um, very. Um, can I say that they sure. were literary impressionists of, yeah. mm -hmm. some, sure. kind, of some kind? But along with it, there were this um, education system that I was part of. So this was a history of Polish literature. Um, this books that have to be known by every single Polish students uh, when you want to, to when you you prepare to um, your exams so but but at the same time I think that I was listening a lot to to, to, to a lot of music and this is always a thing that I think about when I'm in New York that I, that I was obsessively listening to Sonic you. Uh, mm -hmm. New York, Manhattan-based uh, yeah. group, and this is the the mixture I I grew up in. Mm -hmm. Amazing, amazing! And you claimed that heritage for you. You listened to what you um, were uh, lit the moment you were in, and you also anticipated in a way um, a future. And uh, you wrote um, something. Um, something down as a as a as a as a singing bard as a poet um, and representing your country with that great tradition that great 
Polish tradition of literature, of poetry, and of course of theater, and so very well. And um, and it's um, you're so big honor and privilege to have you uh, with us. Maybe uh, we are coming to the end, uh, and um, and it's already over an hour. But maybe read to us a little bit. We'd love to hear your voice. Um, yeah, I, I thought I, I could uh, read the short monologue of Little Metal Girl from mm -hmm. um, No Matter How Hard We Tried, uh, which is very uh, emblematic for, for, yeah. for, for Could my you give a, little, give a little context what's happening when she is speaking that or what's <laughs> about to happen? I think it's... Uh, um, I think that... that, that the, the whole um, play is built on her arguments with her uh, grandma uh, and they are discussing Poland uh, all the time in some way and um, and at some moments little metal girl just explodes with a monologue about being Polish. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if it was dying, um, um, gloomy old Biddy says, of Poland, glorious land, I can still see your beauty dying. A little metal girl says, if it was dying, and it should, should have popped a couple of aspirin. Everybody knows Poland is a stupid country. It's poor and ugly. The architecture is ugly, the weather is gloomy, the temperatures are cold, even the animals have run off to hide in the woods. The shows on TV are bad, the jokes aren't funny, the prime, ministers look, the prime minister looks like a pumpkin and the president looks like the prime minister. It's a joke about our uh, president and uh, prime minister being twins at the time, at that time. One of them is not alive anymore. And that's why the other one became so uh, ugly and evil. In France, they have France. In America, America, they have got America. Germany is, is Germany in Germany. And even the Czech Republic is Czech. But in Poland, all you get is Poland. In France, they have baguettes. England's got toast. The Germans have rolls. As you find, you get rolled. But in Poland, it's bread, bread, bread. In France, they all speak French. They speak English in England. But in Poland, I curse like everybody else does in Polish, which nobody understands. I, think I have long since made up my mind that I'm not Polish, just European. And I learned the language from records and tapes left behind by the Polish queen lady. This here is not my mom, but our personal salesperson from Tesco. She brings Tesco to our house on a forklift, and we just point out what we don't want, and she takes it back, back again, and, and how she skids round these corners. This is not our neighbor, but our private leaflet dispenser. She brings the underpass to our door and hands out leaflets there. She ignores them for us and throws them away round the next corner. She's so fat we keep her locked up at home. Won't have her wobbling around in normal people's field of view. And this here is not my grand. She's our cleaning lady. She's so old and transparent because she just broke, rode in from Ukraine today in this wheelchair. And we exist on the best terms we can. We are no Poles, just normal folks. We came to Poland from Europe to get good bio-organic potatoes grown in real soil, not like those watery ones from Tesco's, and we learn Polish from records and tape. Thank Bravo. you. Bravo. Bravo. <laughs> really, really, really thank you for, for spending time with us. And uh, Christina, also thank you for your presence, for being yeah. with us. And, I'm um, very happy to have it. it, it was My great to, to listen to you, um, Dorota, and... Um, and um, and uh, can't wait to see um, the play uh, tonight as part of the rehearsal for the Truce Festival at the Bohemian National Hall, the Václav Havel Center, an important venue, I think, 
so for global theater and especially Central European um, um, theater. So um, thank you all. Thanks to HowlRound, Talia and Vijay for hosting us, Andy Lerner here at the Siegel Center. And of course, to our listeners who, who take time out of their busy lives. Uh, we did so many talks in the Zoom time and there wasn't so much uh, going on. And, but now, of course, life is back for good. And this is wonderful. And um, and um, and uh, Zoom is often not the best uh, action, but I think there is something to listen to these podcasts in a way what it is. And uh, it did go deep, um, um, what we heard today from um, Dorota, who is a great artist who is struggling, as we also hear, with her craft, uh, with her heritage, with her country, with her future, with her work and the medium she works in. And um, so really, it was a moment where we felt at home, uh, gave us a little secure space, a beautiful space just to listen um, um, to an artist. And I think it made the world more meaningful um, and to all of us and more excited about what theater is about and the mystery behind that uh, great, great art form. Thank you very much. And I hope uh, you all will come back to us to the upcoming Siegel Talks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Tonic. Bye. -bye.